and my computer cut off in the middle of number 16 on the last video that was supposed to be through number 24. So I'm just going to talk us through 16 through 24 again um, since we got cut off. So let's get started with that. Highlands Park is located between two parallel streets, Walker Street and James Avenue. The park faces Walker Street and is bordered by two brick walls that intersect James Avenue at point C, as shown below. So we have the two parallel streets. I marked them as parallel with my triangles, and that will help us later on as we talk about this problem. What is the measure in degrees of angle ACB, the angle formed by the park's two brick walls? Here are the brick walls here and here. We have a triangle. We have parallel lines, and we are going to use the parallel lines because, again, we have this Z formed by these two pair, these, this pair of angles here at C, A, C, and this way. <laughs> There's no letter. And from here, C, A, B. So we have alternate interior angles congruent when lines are parallel. So this angle is 36. Its alternate interior angle is also 36 degrees. So now James Avenue being a straight line 180 degrees, you add 60 plus 36, get 96, subtract from 180 to get that that angle that you're looking for is 84 degrees. So the measure of angle ACB is 84 degrees. Number 17, in triangle ABC, angle B is congruent to angle C. Complete the following paragraph proof to show that triangle ABC is isosceles. Isosceles means that it has at least two sides congruent. So we're trying to prove that um, side AC is congruent to side BA, or CA and BA. So it talks us through. By construction, AD is the perpendicular bisector of BC. So they've, they've said that um, by construction. By the definition of perpendicular bisector, these angles in here will be 90 degrees. And BD will be equal to CD. They'll be the same length if that's a perpendicular bisector. By the transitive property, angle BDA is congruent to angle CDA. BDA is congruent to CDA. I don't say that that's by the transitive property. I say that's because if they are if the measures are congruent, if the measures are equal, then the angles are congruent. So I wouldn't call that the transitive property. That's interesting. And it is given that angle B is congruent to angle C. That's not the main point of this proof, so that's all right. Um, what is the reason why the two triangles would be congruent? Um, so let's look at that. We have an angle here and an angle here congruent. We have side and side, if we're looking at the right and the left triangles here, and we have angle and angle. So we have two angles with a side in between, congruent to two angles and a side in between of the other triangle. So we have angle side angle, but if you notice down here on the reasons, you have two angle side angles. What you have to figure out is the correspondence of the two triangles. So you look, um, I'm going to go to D because that is the answer. Angle A does correspond with angle A. If you were to fold these two triangles on top of each other, angle C would fold on top of angle B. Those correspond to one another. So that's why it is D, because look at A. It says that if you were to fold these on top of each other, angle D would match up with angle B. Remember, the letters go in the order of the correspondence of the angles. So the answer is D, because of the correspondence and because of angle side angle. Okay, let's go to 18. I'm going to try to talk fast here. You can stop and rewind if you need to. I need to get this pretty quick. Um, number 18, how can Michaela complete this proof by contradic contradiction or indirect proof in the accompanying diagram? Triangle ABC, this is given, is not isosceles. Proof that if altitude BD is drawn, it will not be bisect AC. So whenever you're doing an indirect proof, you always want to start um, by stating 
what you are trying to prove is not true. So it says, prove that if altitude BD is drawn, it will not bisect AC. What you want to first assume is that segment BD does bisect segment AC. Because then this means, I'm just going to talk us through it, that AD would be congruent to CD by definition of what a bisector is. Angle ADB in here, angle ADB, is congruent to angle CDB because they are both 90 degrees by definition of altitudes. And altitude comes down to that opposite side and forms a right angle. It's the height of the triangle. BD is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Anytime something is equal to itself, it's by the reflexive property of equality or congruence. Therefore, triangle ADB is congruent to triangle CDB by side angle side, side, angle, side, meaning then that side AB would be congruent to side CB by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, but this makes triangle AB, and this would make triangle ABC by definition, which contradicts the given statement. ABC is not isosceles. So as soon as you can contradict the given statement, you have gone far enough. Now you can say altitude BD does not bisect AC. So listen to that again. Rewind it. Listen to it again. Also, you can look it up on the Escambia County website, and they um, write it out completely. Nancy, number 19, wrote a proof about the figure shown below. In the proof below, Nancy started with the fact that XZ is a perpendicular bisector of WY and proved that triangle WYZ is isosceles. WYZ is isosceles is what they're trying to prove. And so if you just look over here at the flow proof, they give you the progression of what's happening here, and they want to know why triangle WXZ is congruent to triangle WYXZ. Uh, so if you mark what they've said, and they've said WX is congruent, or let's go back here, um, XZ is equal to itself by the reflexive property, WX is congruent to YX by the definition of bisector, and the measure of angle 1 is congruent to measure angle 2 is equal to 90 by the definition of perpendicular. We have side angle side on the right hand triangle and we have side angle side on the left hand triangle. So by side angle side, those two triangles are congruent. Remember to go back over your um, angle side angle, side angle side, side side side, angle angle side, all of those postulates and theorems. If quadrilateral ABCD is congruent to quadrilateral EFGH, then what corresponding side is congruent to side EF? Remember, your correspondence can be determined by the, the order that the letters are written. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. A, B corresponds with E, F. They're both the first two letters in the set of letters. And so corresponding with E, F would be A, B. It's always that case. You don't have to see the picture. You can look at the letters. Number 21, use the figure below in the following proof. Now listen, most of the proofs will probably be drag and drop. So you can follow the progression, mark your picture, uh, mark your diagram, and then figure out what it is that they're asking for. Down here, they're asking why would angle FGE be congruent to angle DGE, and why would angle EDF be congruent to angle GFD? So you have parallel lines, DG or segments, and FE, and you have parallel segments DE and FG. Then you have, they're also congruent properties of parallelograms, definition of parallelograms. They have the, the diagonals are here and here by construction. H is the point of intersection of the diagonals. And then they kind of go overkill with this proof. But, um, and then why would angle F, G, E be congruent to angle D, E, G? And it's kind of hard to see these here, but they would be the angle here and here and the angles here and here. Those are, they make that Z I was telling you about, those are alternate interior angles. 
Now be careful not to stop there because you will have to, you might have to drag and drop. So I'm going to pause for just a second and be right back. Okay. Um, then we're going to go down to step number seven. Why would triangle DHE be congruent to triangle FHG? Now, likely, like I said, on your EOC, you won't have them both on the same line. So don't just stop on this one because you have the answer. Go back up to where your markings are. And it's going to be angle side angle congruence because what we're trying to prove are these two triangles on the bottom, um, in the middle, and the top congruent. And so you've got angle side angle here and you've got angle if I go the same direction angle side angle up here so those are by angle side angle triangle congruent so make sure you know your triangle congruence all right 22 again these would probably be drag and drop use the figure below complete the following proof quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram so if you see, uh, usually they give you the given statements at the beginning and what that means when they are, when it's a quadrilateral. So I marked that they are, um, the opposite sides are parallel. Um, DB is a diagonal of ABCD. So I just drew that in. It's a little crooked, but that's okay. And number four asks, why would DB be congruent to itself? Anytime something is congruent to itself, that is the reflexive property. Um, alternate interior angles are congruent. And then angle side angle, the triangles are congruent. Now, anytime you have a step after and triangles are congruent, it's usually going to be CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And this one actually gives you a weird way of saying it on, on its answer here. Oh, no, it doesn't. I circled the wrong one. Um, it's C. It is not B from what I circled um, the day before. Oh, we'll just go ahead and erase that completely so you don't have the wrong answer. It is the reflexive property in CPCTC. Anytime you have congruent triangles, the corresponding parts will be congruent. Oh, and that's why AB will be congruent to CD and BC will be congruent to BA. All right, 23, in the figure on the right, AB is parallel to DC. Which of the following statements about this figure must be true? Um, whenever you have parallel lines, same side interior angles are supplementary. So that's why B is the answer here. We don't know anything else about this quadrilateral except that those two sides are congruent. Excuse me, those two sides are parallel. So that's all you can assume here. Figure ABCD is a rhombus. The length of AE is X plus 5 units. Uh, the length of EC is 2X minus 3 units, which statement best explains why the equation X plus 5 equals 2X minus 3 can be used to solve for X here. Um, in a rhombus, the diagonals do bisect each other, and since they bisect each other, you can set the pieces equal to each other and solve for X. And you'll see on your handout that number four is off to the side and not numbered. So that should be number four, diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other, and that is why you can set that equation up. Hope this has been helpful. Um, excuse the mistakes, um, and I will see you.